So my dear friends, today the focus of our reflection will be on the temptation of Jesus. Jesus shows himself to be the Son of God, the new Adam of God's new creation. He said yes to God, no to devil. Today is the first Sunday of Lent and Christians all over the world, especially Catholics, have a very long tradition of marking Lent as an especially important time for praying, for fasting and almsgiving or helping the poor. For some of us, this has boiled down to giving up a favorite dish for six weeks drinking less beer or not watching a favorite show on television. For some, the old idea of giving something up has been replaced by doing the things we tend not to do the rest of the year. These may be such things as participating in daily mass, reading scripture books, saying the rosary or setting aside a special time for prayer. All of these things are good. Whatever discipline we choose, its goal should be long-term spiritual growth. It should help us grow closer to God, to appreciate more what Jesus went through for us, and to make our lives permanently more Christ-like. Friends, in this time of Lent, the church invites us to reflect on temptation and how to cope with it. Every person has to be tested in life. Trials and challenges bring out the best and the worst in our lives. Only through trials and tests we come to know our strength and our weaknesses. An awareness of our strength and our weaknesses is very important for any success in our lives. The book of Proverbs very succinctly puts it in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23. Above all else, keep watch over your heart, for therein lies the wellspring of life. Our first reading from the book of Genesis chapter 2 from verse 7 to 9 and chapter 3 from verse 1 to 7 tells us of the unfaithful man the man who lets himself be seduced by the devil and chooses to go against the will of God. This man destroys himself and condemns himself to unhappiness. Our second reading from St. Paul's letter to the Romans chapter 5 verse 12 and 17 to 19 describes the behavior of Jesus, the obedient son of his father. In our Gospel reading from Matthew chapter 4 from verse 1 to 11, we read about the man Jesus allowing himself to be led by the Spirit of God in contrast to Adam and Eve who allowed themselves to be led by the evil spirit. The devil overpowered Adam and Eve, Christ overpowered the devil. Friends, the first thing the temptations of Jesus reveal is that Jesus experienced the same inner battle between good and evil that we do. He felt the same inner conflict between right and the wrong that we feel. This suggests that Jesus is human like us. Although Jesus was tempted as we were and as we are, he reacted to temptation differently than we do. Jesus did not waver or hesitate in the face of temptation. He did not give in to temptation in the least. They suggest that there is something special about Jesus. So what then is special about him? The devil himself gives us a clue when he says to Jesus, if you are the Son of God. With these words, the devil suggests 
that Jesus is not just another human being. He is God's son come to live among us. Years later, St. Paul explained Jesus' nature this way in his letter to the Philippians. Though he was in the form of God, Jesus became like us and appeared in human likeness. Philippians chapter 2, verse 6 to 7. Right after Adam was created, the devil tempted him and Adam fell. From that moment on, every man and woman was held in slavery by the devil. Now the devil tempts Jesus, but where Adam fell, Jesus stands firm. They suggest that Jesus has come to free us from slavery. It suggests also that Jesus has come to right the wrong of Adam's first sin. Commenting of Jesus' mission to do this, St. Paul says in today's second reading in Romans chapter 5, verse 12, 17 to 19. As the one sin condemned all mankind, in the same way, the one righteous act sets all mankind free and gives them life. In other words, Jesus is the second Adam, who has come to right the wrong of the first Adam. That is exactly the way Paul explained Jesus' mission in his letter to the Corinthians. Just as all people die because of their union with Adam, in the same way, all will be raised to life because of their union with Christ. The first Adam, made of earth, came from earth. The second Adam came from heaven. Just as we wear the likeness of the man made of earth, so we will wear the likeness of the man made from heaven. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22, 47 to 49. In other words, Jesus came to be the new human race. Friends, Jesus' desert temptations show two important facts about Jesus. First, he is the Son of God become man. Second, he is the new Adam whose mission is to restore life to all people. The Gospel shows us the power and audacity of the devil, but also the example of Jesus in rejecting and overcoming temptation. As Jesus prepares to begin his public ministry, the devil is there, boldly and cunningly trying to tempt him to abandon the work he was sent by the Father to do. The devil first appeals to Jesus when he is hungry, tempting him with food. Then he tempts Jesus by offering him power and glory. Finally, he tempts Jesus to tempt the Father. Jesus overcame each of these temptations as he saw them for what they really were, lies and empty promises. In fact, the devil uses life's necessities like food and our desire to be powerful and glorified as temptations over and over again. These were used by the devil when he tempted Adam and Eve. They also were used when with the Israelites. They are temptations we face over and over again in our daily lives. Greed, pride, selfishness, arrogance. Jesus did not fall for the pretty words and the glorious visions the devil used. Jesus trusted in the Father, relied on scripture to help him and overcame every temptation. By his life, Jesus modeled for us how to overcome temptation, turn to the scriptures 
and to rely on God. Of course, we cannot go wrong with these formulas. Friends, today's readings are a fitting introduction to Lent. They underscore what Lent is all about. It is relieving Jesus' desert experience against the devil. It is celebrating Jesus' victory over the devil. And insofar as we unite ourselves to Jesus in his battle against the devil, to that extent we will share in his victory also. Let us pray. God our Father, during this season of Lent, you expect us, your children, to reflect on our sins and relent. Therefore, we open our hearts to your words today and ask you to help us to see the evil of our disobedience. Amen. Thank you so much, my dear friend, for listening. Please do remember to subscribe. God bless you.